This boy is about to sing like a canary. That shirt her stepson was wearing that said, you are looking at a legend. Look at that blue shirt. That shirt he's wearing that says you are looking at a legend. Where was his lawyer's advice? Where was common sense? A bed sheet would have been better than that blue shirt. Imagine your day to face the judge on these serious charges and this is the shirt that you choose to wear. Hmm. Him Obiaman must have tell himself it, uh, the shirt is anointed and they tell him say, if him wear the shirt, the shirt is going to get him off. I can't understand any other reason or see any other logic behind why he would have worn that shirt. Even if somebody say, boy, so I probably that him get arrested in the day when he was wearing it. Me would have take it off. Them would have to bring me out there shirtless. Me I tear up the shirt. But he is here. You're looking at a legend. Anyways, hmm, the getaway driver pled guilty and is about to sing like a canary. Welcome back to SoFlow TV again, everybody. It is your host with the most. We're going to take some information from the Jamaica Observer. Shout out to the Jamaica Observer. Shout out to Star. Shout out to the Gleaner. Shout out to Loop News. Shout out to all of these entities that help me to compile my informations on many videos. All right. So we can get information from some reliable sources, not just hearsay. Anyways, Jamaica Observer says, Leon Hines. That's the name of the man who is accused of driving the getaway car on January 31st in the incident where 51-year-old Andrea Lowe Garwood was gunned down inside of the church while she was singing and giving praises. He has decided that he wants to cooperate for a lesser sentence. Now, the details that goes into that is this. In the facts of the case outlined to the Home Circuit Court in downtown Kingston yesterday morning by the representative from the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, Hines, who is the getaway driver, who pleaded guilty to only two of the six counts on the indictment in which he has been charged, has admitted to being the one who rented the motor car on January 29th and to driving the motor car all the way from Montego Bay to the church where Lo Garwood lost her life. Now, this is a hefty role to play. This tells me that he knew everything before anything even happened. He was an intricate part of the plan to execute this lady, to carry out and execute this plan. And they thought they were planning properly and were going to get away with it. And they got caught. May I forgive a big up to the JCF, Jamaica Constabulary Force, those on this case who actually did their due diligence. And I'm going to tell you why in a minute. So, as it goes, according to the 23-year-old Hines, which is the driver, the getaway driver, who is a storekeeper, he drove the rented car to the church based on a request. That means somebody requested that he drive the car to the church and wait. It is said that the person that did that was the one mastermind behind the entire thing, which is her stepson. This is what the driver said. He said, upon arriving there, and learning that the service had not begun as yet. He drove elsewhere. The man go look some food in the early morning before returning to the church where an unsuspecting low guardwood Garwood was a member of the church. Him already knew that so she was a member of the church. He already knew why he was waiting there. He already knew what to expect and him get the signal to drive off, etc., etc., there, he said, he parked in a lane and waited after him eating breakfast and everything, you know. Him, he's so anxious to get this thing going, him reach too early. So I'm going to look breakfast, eat a food, sit down and chill out in a lane and lay waited. He said some minutes passed before he heard 
five gunshots coming from the direction of the church, followed by a sixth gunshot from the direction of the church a while later. Now, after speeding away from the church, he headed to Rose Heights in Montego Bay. Listen to this. Listen to the details. He said that shortly after arriving in Montego Bay, he headed out to the country and saw via a cell phone the news alert that Logarwood had been shot dead. So by the time him reached Mobe and drive out into the country, it's already on the news. He's seeing it on his cell phone that this lady was killed this way in the church. Hines said that right then, in an attempt to cover up his role in the murder, he called the owner of the car that he rented it from. And y'all remember the guy that they had his picture all over the place saying that he was the one that was involved and he was the shooter when apparently this guy knew nothing about what they were going to do. He rented a car to someone who wanted to pay to rent a vehicle and that's it. And they went far away from where he lived to conduct their business. Anyhow, the driver said that after that, seeing all that on his cell phone, he called the owner of the car and when he woke up that morning, he realized that the vehicle, this is what he told the owner of the car. When I wake up this morning, I realized that the vehicle was stolen. He later told the owner that he found the vehicle down the road from his house and the owner told him to report the vehicle stolen incident to the police. He said that on his way to the police station, now these are all blunders he is making, you know, while he's trying to cover up his tracks, just digging himself deeper and putting more and more evidence on the table for him to be tried and convicted by, right? He said that on his way to the police station, he stopped and he threw away the cell phone because he did not want the cops to find the evidence of the phone calls that he had received, as well as the bag in which the murder weapon had been concealed. And it was while he was at that spot that he was collared up by the police, who took him to the Montego Bay police station, where he continued to lie and say in the car that he had rented had been stolen. He, however, came clean after them probably shot him too hard ears as I don't know, or roughed him up a little bit or however they did whatever they did maybe they just said listen up you're looking at like 50 years 60 years behind bars you know and if you want to take this rap by yourself and go down for this callous cold murder in our church them all dash you away you're lucky them don't have the death penalty here because them would have broke your neck and hang you but i'm sure you will never come out of prison as long as you live listen at 23 years old that's the last thing you want to hear going to prison for the rest of your life. Imagine you got prison for tw uh, at 23 years old and you are, you live long enough to be 99, you do the maths. Nobody wants that. So of course, he broke down. Hines, he however ca came clean to the police when the police produced the cell phone that he had thrown away and he cooperated based on their advice so i'm fling with the cell phone police found the cell phone that he flung away <laughs> look at god anyhow and big up to them police there because this is what you call doing police work and due diligence seeing heinz who was nabbed along with 29 year old javon garwood which is the stepson the murder victim stepson who is otherwise called janoy and Dwight Bingham, who is said to be the trigger man, had originally been charged with murder, illegal possession of firearm, accessory before the fact, accessory after the fact, and conspiracy to murder, and misprison of felony. Hines pleaded guilty to illegal possession of firearm and accessory after the fact to murder. This is not correct. There's no way he should be able to plead guilty and call, oh, I'm going to only plead guilty to possession of the firearm because he's probably going to be able to say in court, well, the shooter was Dwight Bingham 
and Dwight give me the gun and say for dispose of the gun. So I dash with the gun, sir, and I dash with the cell phone. Well, illegal possession of firearm he has pled guilty to. Accessory after the fact, there's no way he should be able to plead guilty to accessory after the fact when he was actually an intricate part of the whole thing leading up to the fact and after the fact. So he should be charged with accessory prior to, he should be charged with accessory after, he should even be charged with conspiracy to murder because he was a definite part of the plan to carry this out. However, I understand now that law enforcement have to give sometimes in order to get, you understand? So in order to get the intricate details of this story, they have to actually say to him, all right, we're gonna lessen your time, but you tell us everything. We want the intricate details and nothing else. He, however, struck a plea deal with the Crown in which he has admitted to assisting with evidence relating to the other two accused. Admitted to assisting with evidence relating to the other two accused. The Crown, for its part, agreed to offer no evidence in respect to the other four counts on the indictment. So they will not charge him with the other four counts on the indictment. Whatever evidence they had, they will withhold that evidence against him on the other four counts. If Hines, which is the driver, however, reneges or decides, say, me not talk, me done, me not tell, me not bother want to snitch, I don't want to snitch again. If he decides that, if he decides that he does not want to give them the full list of the information as per the agreement will be voided and he will stand trial like the rest of them on all six counts. Jamaica Observer says that the media, however, has been barred from disclosing the details as told to police regarding the involvement of Garwood and Bingham on the basis that it could prejudice their case, which are being heard before the Falmouth Parish Court in Trelawney. I want you to do a map. How far is Trelawney from Montego Bay? Just ask Google, how far is Trelawney from Montego Bay? Google will tell you that the distance from Trelawney to Montego Bay is a little drive. You understand? It's quite a drive. It's a one hour and 13 minute drive. It's about 51.5 kilometers. So he had a lot of time to think. And you drive all the way that far, a one hour and 13 minute drive in one direction and drive one hour and 13 minute back in the other direction to go pick up this car, to go wait at the church, to go drive away with the shooter to go dispose of evidence and all this other stuff so yes he was very much an intricate part of the entire process right the media has been barred and the media cannot disclose whatever has been told to the police so far in regards to the case journalists were cautioned against reporting any other anything other than what Heinz said in relation to himself in the matter so the journalists apparently are not even able to come out and say, well, today we got word that Heinz said that the shooter was actually this person, um, Janoy, or the shooter was actually so-and-so, and Janoy was in the car ducked down when I was driving. The, we're not, not us, we, but the journalists like Jamaica Observer, Star and all them, they are not allowed to give out the intricate details of what this person, the driver, is about to reveal. I want to hear the details. The court ordered that aspects of his testimony regarding the other two men, their actions and utterance in relation to the incident should not be reported. So apparently we are not going to be getting the full details of the story. I think this is an open and shut case. I think everything has already been put out there, 
But in a court of law, things play out differently. Because in court, you know, it's not what you did, it's what can be proven. You understand? So let's see how this goes. Now, Lo Garwood, a National Commercial Bank employee, she was in the middle of a worship session in her church, unbeknownst to her, unsuspecting of anything, giving praises to the Almighty God in her mind, in her world, in her existence. And in that very moment is where she lost her life with multiple gunshot wounds right there inside of the church. Hines, who is the driver, is going to be sentenced on March 12th. The court has, in the meantime, requested social inquiry report and a police antecedent report for Hines. And this is where we stop with that story so far. A lot of people like myself are saying, man, I don't know. So the goal is to prove that you are guilty in court, right? But what good is it when you are able to kill somebody and then go before the courts and say, yes, I did it. So all they're looking for is for you to admit that you did it and then they'll automatically slash your time in half. In closing this video, let me say this. A lot of the people out there who are into foolishness, look to your left, look to your right, Look to your front and look behind you. You see these people that surround you that you call friends? Everybody is tough until the walls start caving in on them. Everybody is tough until one of these lawmen have you locked in a room, handcuffed to a bench or a table, and you are looking at the rest of your life in prison. Everybody is tough. Everybody is against snitching until that time come. Majority of people are going to snitch. This is the perfect definition of snitching. If you've never understood what snitching was, this is snitching. Snitching is not when you see somebody walk into your neighborhood, fire some wild gunshots and end up killing a little girl or a little boy. And you know is who and you're going to tell. That's not snitching. That's getting rid of some idiot out of your community who killed a little girl or a little boy. Snitching is when me and you do a crime together and you decide to work with the prosecution to get less time by testifying against me. That is snitching. We will have to see how this goes. We are going to stay close to the story here because... Whether you want to call him informant, or you want to call him snitch, or you want to call him whatever you want to call him. You know, that old saying, snitches get stitches. I don't know if he's going to be in solitary confinement to do his time. I don't know if they're going to put him in a witness protection program and send him away. I don't know how his story is going to work out. But either way, hell has just begun for him. And hell is revving up and getting ready to start for the other two, which is the alleged trigger man and the victim's stepson. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about this one. For me, this is an open and shut case. No trial needed, but we have to abide by law. I'm out. Peace.